What's up guys? On today's episode we're getting back on the white wall special. My main goal is to get the throttle cables all hooked up. Aaron from Bunch Pinstriping was able to help me out on getting a couple things done so that we can make this work. Also, I'm going to go to my storage unit and get all my front end pieces so we'll get that done too. So hopefully by the end of this episode or in the next episode we can put the front end back on this thing. So that'd be pretty freaking sweet. Stay tuned. We got a lot going on. Let's get to it. I'm White Wall Steve, and this is my Good Enough Garage. Okay, so originally, I was going to have the throttles like this, where we just put something here, has something hook on the back one, and it pulls both at the same time. However, when this one was opened all the way up, this one was only like half throttle or three quarter throttle. So what we're actually gonna do is we're actually gonna change this one because I was originally gonna have this throttle cable come from the back and hook on here, but it's not looking like it's gonna work out that way because of where this is located, and I'm not gonna change this on the firewall because it's already done. Originally on this motor, this hook thing, was down on the bottom and the throttle cable came in it like swooped way out and came in from the front so we're going to kind of do that but we're going to tighten it up a little bit so i'm going to have this kind of come through here and it's good we're going to make it hook onto something or it may come all the way out here i'm not quite sure yet but it's going to hook on we're going to make some sort of bracket to hold it hold it in place right here and then i had my buddy aaron who was on the channel last time he did this for me. Now this is the original one, but instead of this pointing down, we flipped it up like this one. This throttle cable is going to come up through here like it did originally and pull back on it like that. And then the cruise control is going to hook onto here like it did originally to pull back on it so that the cruise control works. And then we're going to have a threaded rod coming off of the back of that with a heim joint and that's going to go back to this one. So I got to get this off get this out put this one in probably going to have to shorten this get rid of this sheathing this is all going to be trial and error i hope it goes well So I got this back on, I got the new throttle all set. We need to really trim this down. What I'm gonna do is get that cut and then I'll be right back and we'll figure out how we're gonna run this and cut it down. So I got the linkage all hooked up, it works. So that's a big plus in my world. I'll bring you in, show you what, what I did, show you how everything works and it works out pretty good. So here's my linkage. I had it coming through the front like it did. I made this bracket here and then I did this bracket here that holds this in. So then I got my cruise control that comes back down and around off of here, connects to the throttle here, and everything works. And I made this bracket here that bolts to the secondary throttle body. Everything works the way it's supposed to. And the pedal's hooked up inside, so everything works. My next line of attack is to get these wires cleaned up, maybe put some loom on it, clean up some of these wires here. And I just want to get all the white, rest of the wiring hooked up, cleaned up. Oh, I also got my belts on my pulley system. So that looks kind of cool. Oh, and I'm going to get this off of here too. That, that needs to go. So let's start getting this thing all straightened out. Let's get to it. All right. So as you can see, I got the truck back down on the ground. Got it pushed outside. But let's go check out that engine in the truck now that it's on the ground is pushed outside. Ooh, and she's a bit dusty too, but I got to get that interior cleaned out. <laughs> But there she is. I even got the valve covers on. Uh, the black one is the one we're going to be using. I got to get it surfaced out, and that's the one that's going to be going to the sand caster to get that all done. And I just put that other one on just to give a feel of what we're looking looking like. And man, does that look cool. Those aren't the air cleaners I'm going to be using because the way that that hood comes down, that hood kind of slopes down, and that may hit. 
so we might be looking for something else maybe like some old school round ones or something almost looks like a little miniature 327 i also got some cool little breathers that are going to go on here let me go grab those and show you what those look like so aaron over at bunch pinstriping came through again and found these little tiny like three quarter size breathers and then these are going to go once these are casted in aluminum they're going to get bolted to the side here i got the same ones on my corvette so they look they should look really cool but and then of course one of these this side is going to have to have a hole punched in it for the pcv valve there's no way i'm getting around that so i'm going to try to make that as discreet and clean as possible so next up core support and the electric fan set up this shroud is actually going to be painted red i think i'm going to have aaron letter it up white wall special or something cool on it and also these need to be cleaned up sprayed and painted those are going to be black as well and then I got to go get my pick up my fenders and the inside of those are going to be painted black. So the so everything's going to be black. So that engine and that firewall just stands out. Let's work on getting all that stuff painted. I got the fender wells all painted nice and black. I also got the inside of the fenders painted black. And I got the core support painted black. One thing I did overlook though is I had to get power steering lines made. Could have put them on after the front end was painted. But I think it would be easier to install the power steering lines before the front end was painted put on. I went up to my good friends over at Plymouth Rubber and Transmission in Plymouth, Michigan. I picked up my power steering lines custom made. So we're going to get this installed and get the return line put in and then we're going to start assembling the front end. So what do you say we get down to business? Let's get this done. This one is your return line that's low pressure and then we got this one here that's a high pressure. Pull this fitting out of here. Here's my return line. It's actually kind of crashing into the steering box so I'm just going to Kind of bend that out of the way a little bit and then the high pressure part is back here so we'll get the plug out of that and we'll start getting these all set up and get these ran should be real easy got that line on the back of the power steering pump there now i got this fitting which converts it to a jic or an an fit style fitting okay and nice and tight go just like that All right, nice and tight. So now let's get that low pressure line done. We're gonna shorten it up quite a bit. Mark it, pull it all back off, take it over to the bench and cut it. Okay, we'll make sure this fits really good. Okay, power steering lines are all set. Let's get this front end on.
noticing though that the front suspension is sitting higher than what it originally was when I had the old motor in. I don't think I got rid of that much weight, but we'll have to wait until we get the rest of this thing put together to see what it looks like, but we might be messing with those springs to try to get this thing a little lower. Before we continue on with the project, I want to let you guys know that if you want to support the channel and support what we're doing here and support the Good Enough Garage, I'm selling stickers that we had made up. We got the Good Enough Garage logo. We also have the White Wall Special and the Lovet. The Lovet will be featuring on the channel here pretty soon, so that thing will be coming out of hiding. And eventually we'll get doing shirts and hoodies and hats and all that cool stuff. But if you guys would really like to support the channel, this is a good way to do it. You can PayPal me at chrome.reflections at yahoo.com and you can just put in what stickers you want, how many you want of each, and where I'm gonna mail them to and I'll send them out to you. I'm selling them for $4 a piece, so that covers any type of postage, any handling, anything like that. So help support the channel and order some stickers from us. So next up, we're gonna go ahead and start getting the radiator, the condenser, and my the external oil filter. We're gonna get that mounted right now. So I'm gonna bring you guys in, show you where I'm gonna mount it, and then we're gonna get started on that. So here's my oil filter. It's got these four bolts on the back. So we're gonna mount it right in here. So when I come back, all that should be done and it should look pretty good. All right guys, I got the external oil filter all mounted. The lines are ran. I'm gonna make a nice bracket to hold them to the fender well. Also got the battery tray in. Also got the condenser mounted. I didn't get the radiator in just yet because I need to get bushings for the radiator. For some reason, I never had them, and if I'm in here, I wanna do this right. All right, guys, and that's gonna do it for this episode. Be sure to like and subscribe, and hit the notification bell so you're always up to date on what we got going on. Also, be sure to check out Cruising Classics Agency, Grundy Insurance. They can insure your classic or collector car for what you feel it's worth. So be sure to give April or Velma a call. Here's all their information. Or check out their website, www.cruisingclassicsagency.com. So give them a call today. Thanks for checking out the Good Enough Garage. I'm White Wall Steve, and it's good enough.